Welcome, everybody, to Down, Set, Lead, the book launch party featuring the author, the writer, the speaker, Rod Bourne. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone online, to everyone here live at Max's house. Yep. And you thought I was going to do it wrong, didn't you? Wow, you I know. got my drink. I know where I'm at. Fells Point, baby. No other place to be. <laughs> Thank you, Gail from 10KSB. So this is your night. This is your big thing. And two plus years, this book is in the work. At least. Longer Actually, than two much, years? Much longer. Much longer. Um, this book started back in my HR days. And I mean, that was my first career. And so uh, what I started doing was collecting all of the crazy stories from the investigations that I was doing of, you know, people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s acting like three, four, and five-year-olds not being able to play in the sandbox and just, I mean, really stupid stuff. And I was like, this is, you know, the old truth is stranger than fiction kind of stuff. So I just started making a list. And I was like, I am going to start writing a book eventually. And, I, and I'm going to call it, what were you thinking? Because that's what I would tell people whenever I would have to fire somebody, I would like literally look at them and I like, so before I fire you, I got one last question for you. What were you thinking? And, and quite often they'd be like, oh, you know, and they try to rationalize it out. And I'm like, okay, thank you very much. You lose. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and but it would just be another story um, for the collection. And, but then kids happened and life happened and everything else. And I changed careers. And so uh, then I'm like, I need to finish this book. And as I started writing it, as I was collecting everything, I, it dawned on me, this is more and more like, um, lack of leadership. It's bad leadership, <laughs> why this is happening. And so that's kind of how it formulated into what it is. So you went after athletes, former athletes. Why did you inject that part into it? Besides, I know you're a sports junkie. I, I love sports and my first go-to sport, I, I, I love the Ravens, but my first go-to sport is soccer. I grew up playing it. I coached it. I refed it. I, I love soccer, but I get that a lot of Americans don't get soccer. So if I wanted to make one with, you know, those kinds of stories. Um, a lot of people were like, uh, it's soccer. Um, but football, everybody loves football. I love football. And the Green Bay Packers, I know. That's your team, buddy. Okay, gotcha. So um, we're, we're in Purple Town, baby. Tonight, <laughs> uh, it's going to happen. But um, so I, I thought it would be really cool and relatively easy because there's a lot of vernacular in, uh, in our language that, you know, we use football motifs you know, hey, let's, you know, it's, it's fourth down. We get, you got to punt, Rich. You got to punt um, or whatever. And I was like, so let's have some fun with it and mm -hmm. um, make it football motif. And originally I thought it would be really cool if I could get, you know, some huge star to, you know, to co-author it with me. And I found out very quickly that, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm no one in, in, in the sea of, of authors that are trying to be authors, um, you know, who's going to want to sign up with me? And so I worked very diligently and made lots of connections. My wife calls me a serial connector, and I think <laughs> I am. And I love connecting people and connecting with people. And bit by bit, I got to meet some really, really interesting guys and gals. And they, and I, it dawned on me, instead of having one person, I've got 11 chapters. Let's shoot for 11 different people to be contributors. And that was part of the journey. So I was writing and I was also meeting people and, and tying them in. And it was really great that, that I got some really awesome contributors for this book. So what was the funniest part of you doing this book? Besides two and a half years in the making, every yeah. time you and I talked, it was like, don't worry, don't worry. But what was the funniest part for you going through the experience? Um, in, in all honesty, I, I think it was just being a rookie author and doing things and having, you know, either my designer tell me, no, 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 you, you don't want, you know, Hand-drawn pictures don't work for us, Rod. Um, you know we need we, you know we need <laughs> no real stick. things. You know, uh, you, no stick people. And you know, um, I, I thought I did stick people really well, but apparently not. So just kind of stuff like that, where I, uh, you know, just rookie mistakes, um, but working with really good people. And it's one of the lessons that I've learned in life is that you know you might be really really good at a few things, but you aren't good at everything. And it's definitely worth your while to find someone who does it really well, pay them. Mm -hmm. And that way it takes it off of your plate. Then, you know, I'm not stuck with stick figures in my book. Downset lead is the ultimate playbook for building your leadership confidence. It's now out, right? Yep. 
It's out. It's, I mean, we're going to be talking about Amazon, other places to go get it. Um, what is your heart behind this? Why do this? So what I love about the work that I do is, um, and, and I get that it sounds kind of cheesy, but I love making people and organizations better. That's what I am about. I, you know, um, the, the biggest thing for me, Rich, in all honesty, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I, I went to college um, and I, I started off at junior college. I didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't know what I wanted to be. My parents were awesome, awesome people, but both of them were educators. My mom taught English in high school. My dad worked at a college. And the only advice they could give me career-wise was don't become a teacher. And I'm like, okay, but you know, I, I, I like to teach, you know, I, you know, I, I like to explain things. And um, my wife says I'm, that I'm very, very good at, at being able to take a concept and explain it to people. And, and, I, and I think that's just a natural talent I have. So like, all right, don't go into teaching. What else can I do? And I totally backed into my career. Um, I went to Towson and they're like, you got to pick a concentrate or, you know, major in a concentration, son. And I, I was dating somebody at the time who was in human resources. She's like, you'd be, <laughs> she'd be like, you'd be great in HR. And I'm like, okay, sounds good to me. And so I picked HR and that's how that happened. And I had a lot of difficulty early in my career getting traction because even though I had taken the HR classes, I had no experience. No one you know, encouraged me to go out and do internships and, you know, all that kind of stuff during my schooling. And so I came out and I was, it was cold and um, there was, you know, a little bit of a recession going on. A lot of my friends weren't getting hired because of that. I was relatively lucky. I got kind of like a, an internship kind of position to start off with, but I couldn't connect with anybody. Um, it was just, you know, it was going, it was drive downtown and it was bam, 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 working for a bank. And um, I, I really had difficulty getting traction early in my career. And um, eventually I did. And eventually I learned what I needed to do to become successful. And a lot of that really comes into, and I, I do a lot of talks about this, is the power of mentoring and how to, if you need a mentor, how to find one and how to make a mentoring relationship. There are some people that are, that are here tonight and that are you know, on, on the call that have been mentors to me. And it's, it, it, to me, it is the panacea to a lot of what fills the earth these days. If you have somebody who will take some time out and be able to say, look, this is what I would recommend you doing. Let's, let's think through this and, and why, why do you want to do it this way? Let's talk about this. And there, a lot of that kind of knowledge is in this book. Um, a lot of the book is the stories that I faced as I was going um, a lot through my HR career, but also my, my leadership development career, my, my training years after that. And um, the lessons that I learned and how to... Uh, explain them in a fun way, uh, movie quotes, football motifs, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that's in the book. Um, and what was really, really encouraging was we did some early reads um, and uh, some pre-release reads, and especially the younger professionals who were in, in that group, to hear them talk about the aha moments that they had, I would have love to have had those aha moments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this was obviously before internet and, and everything else um, that, you know, if, if I can make, a, especially a younger person's um, travels easier through their career, but anybody's, because I, I've had a lot of experiences. Um, I've been in a lot of good places, been in a lot of bad places. How do you work yourself out of the bad places? How do you find that happy spot? And, um, and, and that's where I am now. I, I mean, I, I love what I'm doing. I think I'm really good at what I'm doing. I know what I'm not good at, and I know people who are good at those things that I can't do. So, well, that's Rod Bourne. We're going to hear more from him. This is your party. This is your night. But you brought a lot of people into the book. You yeah. wanted other speakers, experts, athletes to add in to make it unique, but add another element. Absolutely. So, Mike Sela is our first guest. Now, is he online or is he in house tonight? Mike is hopefully, uh, I'm hoping he's online. Mike, are you there? Let's uh, unmute here for a second and see. Mike, if you're here, say something for us. I'm not seeing 
or scrolling through the cube here for a second. Mike and, Sheila couldn't make it. That's okay. All right. Well, then we're going to go on to uh, Jim Norris. And Jim from Skypoint. Is Jim online with us tonight? Do you see I'm pretty Jim? Sure, yep, there he there is. He is. All right, Jim. Jim is an awesome, awesome guy. I love working with Jim. Yeah, Jim, there you go. Got the eight rocking tonight. So, Jim, you got to unmute yourself. Join in the conversation for uh, some moments here. And uh, go. Jim, how do you know this crazy guy, Rod, by the way? Well, in front of everybody, I have to tell the story, huh? Uh, we hired at Skypoint, I'm the CEO at Skypoint Federal Credit Union. We hired uh, Rod to do an hour, uh, no, a day and a half of training for our managers back in 2020, early 2020. Well, guess what? Pandemic happened. Rod worked with us. Guess what? We had him for a whole year. <laughs> Couldn't get rid of me, could you? I tried. Couldn't like get that <laughs> going away. So every month, starting in about mid-2020, um, we did a Zoom call with all my managers, and Rod headed it up and really provided some great training. But what I liked the best was he really engaged our managers in that really bad time of the pandemic. So that engagement, the training, man, I look forward to every month uh, with Rod during that really dark time. Uh, he was the brightness that really uh, shone upon it. Uh, and we're still working with Rod today. So when Rod told you about the book, First question there, what was your reaction when he said, hey, Jim, I'm going to write a book and I want you to help out? <laughs> well, I was flabbergasted, to tell you the truth. It was uh, <laughs> awesome. Because, you know, who else you know, would, would write a book like this? It's just, this is Rod. So it was awesome. So what exactly did he want you to do in the book or did you just do what you wanted to? I, you know... I actually really didn't have anything to do with the book. Um, Rod really just, I think was just um, using some of my energy, you know, to kind of get him along in the book. Um, you know, I'm retiring next year. And, uh, but I still have a lot of energy. So, uh, and that's where Rod's been helping me lately is really, you know, kind of working through um, you know, getting to, to that retirement date, um, but really getting a lot done, um, even in, the, I guess, the twilight of my career. Jim, uh, Jim is an excellent, excellent leader. I, I mean, any organization would be really lucky to have him and to be able to work with him um, on, on first with his group and then with him uh, and doing some coaching has been, it, I've learned and gotten an awful lot out of it. And um, we've, we've really done a lot of great things, haven't we? You bet. It's been awesome. Jim, what do you hope for Rod out of this book? What, what is your best hope for him as a new author, aspiring speaker, leader, coach? What's your best wish for him? I really just hope that he gets the accolades that he deserves out of this book. Um, he's a great guy. And that's what I want him to really, you know, kind of bask in what he's really put together here. Um, and he's very genuine. So that's what I want to really come through in this book, the genuineness. Thanks, partner. Appreciate that. Thanks you for bet. joining us tonight. Thanks for being here for the celebration. Really appreciate that. And uh, again, we'll go back, back to muting for a moment here. And let's go back to Rod. Let's talk about the book a little bit, because as you go through this, your chapters also have blank little questions and open spaces to do homework. And yeah, you expect people to read and learn oh, at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you buy this book. I, I should put like a pencil with it when you, you, you get a free pencil with the, with the book. But, um, you know, if you hear somebody talk about something, you have, you know, a, a chance to remember what they say. But if you're actually writing things down on cue, um, then you're very much more apt to remember it. It's, uh, it you know, becomes a lot more likely to be habit forming. And so, you know, I give examples in the book, you know, let's talk about things that you really like. Let's talk about places that you like. How can you uh, make your place to be more like, you know, things that you want? And, and what we ultimately pull out of it is how to be intentional about what it is that you do. It is about how do you personify 
your organization? How do you personify, you know, even, even if it's just a small little department or a, or a store, whatever it is, you know, how do you make it so that you feel I belong here, this is mine, my people like, want to be here and, and to be genuine about it? Um, because if you try to be something that you're not, <clears throat> if you're like, wow, I really like the way that Kurt handles himself. I wish I could be more like Matt. You know, Rob is just like this really cool guru kind of guy. And, and, but you're not naturally like that person and you try, it's going to be obvious that, oh, well, he's just trying to be like Matt. Um, but if you are your version of what Kurt does or what Jim or Art or whoever does, um, then you begin to feel like you get in the flow with it yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can always go back and look at your notes because things evolve and you might want to have an eraser with your pencil and, you know, change that, you know, six months down the road or a year down the road or whatever, because your ideas change, you know, what you think is going to work best for your team and yourself may change. It develops and that's a good thing, but you want to capture that in that white space. In chapter five, that chapter is all about selling. It's, the S is for set, stands for sell as the vision. You can do a whole chapter, but I love it. Midway through, you get into one of my favorite areas and it says, let's drill down on the final level. You have the vision, the mission, and then you get into values. Yep. I love that you make sure you put the values in the book. But you said, write three things down that you value. Things could be such as persistence, inclusion, uh, sustainability, you, you, you literally had them go through and then do yeah. their own scale and charting. Absolutely. Why did you make sure values were so highlighted like that? Because it does stand out for me in the book that you make sure mission and vision, what everyone talks about yeah. in every leadership book. Yeah. And they miss values. Right. Why did you put it in? Uh, be because it's, uh, that's where the, the, that's where you get traction. Uh, you know, it, again, it all goes back. To, are you getting traction? And you have to know what it is that is important to you and why it's important to you. And that has to be the message that you are getting across to the people that you are working with. And if you are authentic, if you are true, I, 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 we just did a, a fun TikTok with this. And, and I, I got to give a shout out to Tyler Lowe and Creative Edge uh, Marketing. He does a great job with this and he really helps me uh, think this stuff out. But we did a shoot recently uh, with cue cards and we talk about um, you know the power of being you yeah. and it is, you know, if you, if you are authentic, people are out there who will love you and they will love you because you're being the authentic you. There might be some people that are like, don't want to see that rod, don't need to deal with that rod. And that's fine. But, you know, when, when I, the world is full with a wide variety of people, there are going to be some that look at me and be like, he's not for me. He's not for us. And that's fine because I know that there are people in groups out there that I am, for, that, I am fit for, and they're fit for me. And, uh, and I would be wasting my time if I tried to do something else otherwise. Let's see. Uh, by the way, you wanted at some point to share gratitude for the people doing, helping you with this book. Oh, yeah. Can you go through the list? Can you, do you have the list memorized, people you want to yeah, I, I, shout out to? I mean, I mean, again, Tyler Lowe, Creative um, Edge Marketing, does a fantastic job. Um, you, thank you very much. I, I mean, you've been a big help in helping me get clear as to how I – you know, launch my book. Gail uh, Furman here at um, Max is on Broadway. She's a former uh, 10K, uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, 10,000 small business owner. She's awesome. You want to find somebody that really supports what's going on in Baltimore City. She's fantastic. Um, Jay uh, LNB has been an amazing mentor for me. Rob Orlando has been an amazing accountability partner for me. Um, Becca, uh, Gigi, uh, skinny Rod and Dan. Um, <laughs> skinny the, Rod, Rod skinny dad. Dad. There's, skinny there's Rod. a story there behind that. <laughs> it, 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 and I, I hope he's on here tonight. Rod, really, he's, he is the, one of the most excellent people I have ever met. He's down in Nashville and he's an awesome guy. And I, I think I heard his feelings several months ago um, inadvertently because we were having a meeting and he's like, oh, I'm going to do this hard 75. And I, I don't know if you've heard about that, but I mean, it's just like this really difficult 75 day long thing that you've got to do. And I have no interest right now in me doing, you know, hard to, and, and I think that my reaction, you know, just kind of came off as like, well, good luck with that. <laughs> He's just like, well, 
thanks, you know, and, and, and sure enough, 75 days, days later, I mean, you know, he's, I mean, he's looking even better than he did before. And he's just like, yeah, you know, not only did the challenge of, of hard 75, just Rod, Rod there being like, oh, I don't think you can do it. So I, like, he's dropped like 20 pounds. So now I call him skinny Rod, even though he's like really big and strong and everything else. We'll see if we get skinny Rod to come out of the crowd here a little bit. Um, you have uh, Nick Patterson. Is Nick online or Nick in the room? Yeah, Nick's right yep, there. I'm, I Nick, am here. Come I'm on here. for a few moments, Nick. We're uh, bring your microphone live. Unmute yourself. Join our conversation. Nick, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, what would be the first thing you would say to Rod as he's celebrating this amazing occasion tonight? Well, just, you know, from getting to know you over the past couple months and, you know, helping with your website as well as seeing your leadership skills firsthand, you know, I'd say really enjoy this because you earned it. And, you know, I'm different than I'm sure everybody in here because I really only met Rod over the summer. So when I read the book, that was my first real flavor of all of Rod's experiences. And that just, it really impressed me just the amount of actionable advice that was in there, both as an entrepreneur, as well as I coach lacrosse as well. So I got a lot of value out of this book and a lot of different aspects of my life. So, you know, congratulations and you really deserve it. Thanks partner. So as one of the beta test readers, what were some of the big takeaways you got out of it? What, what, what was your homework that you put in there? Yeah. You know, you know, I think, I think the, the biggest takeaway was how to deal with people when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because that, that, that was something, you know, that I, I've sort of struggled with both in my coaching and my professional life is how do I attack these people and how do I deal with these people that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing? So there are a lot of takeaways that Rod put in there, especially, you know, when you're in that down section of weighing it out, negotiating that, that I'm going to, you know, continue to use. And it was stuff I never thought of until I read it in this book. So it was a big help for me there. What was the biggest surprise of the book? Was there anything you thought like, you know, it might be in there, but wasn't in there or there was something that like literally like blew you away. And you're like, wow. Well, I, I just thought that the biggest surprise was how entertaining Rod was able to make a subject where I, I've read a lot of business books and, you know, you, you're 30 minutes in and you feel like you're doing homework. You know, I, I, I did feel entertained <laughs> by the book. What would you say to someone that is looking at this on the shelf? And I was just with a book publisher, by the way, just this past week, and we we're talking about this question of you're with someone, they're picking it up, they don't know if they should buy it, not buy it. What would you tell somebody that's literally looking at it and they're not sure what to do? I, I'd, I'd tell them, look, you know, it's, it's under 200 pages. And regardless of whatever you do in life, whether you're a teacher, you're in business, you're whatever type of professional you are, there's going to be some value that you're going to get out of it. You know, it's an entertaining read. And it's something where, you know, under 200 pages, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by spending 30 minutes a night, you know, for the next two weeks, you know, getting some takeaways from it. What do you want his sequel to be? Do you, would, would, it, would you advise him on the next book in the series? I, I would say the next book, should probably have a movie theme and and it should really and, and I think really dive into you know a lot more of those stories that you touched on you know over the years because I found those really interesting you know as I read through the book cool fantastic appreciate that Rod you got anything to uh, share back Nick's an awesome guy um you know, he, he runs in, in the same group. Uh, I, I'm blessed with two awesome kids, one of whom went to Salisbury University, and she was the one that introduced me to Tyler. And Nick was part of that whole group of the marketing team um, that just kicked butt when when they were all down there. I, I mean, they, they won a competition where they beat Maryland and um, an American University and, and all these other much bigger schools. And I'm blessed to be, I, I, I love, I, I love working, especially with young professionals um, because they've got all that extra energy and that whole crowd, uh, Aaron, my daughter, Tyler, Amanda, and Nick, I, I mean, and Nick does a great job it, it, what he does. And so I'm really blessed to have met him. Nick, thanks for dropping in. Hang on everybody, because we are going to have prizes tonight. We are going to have an ebook, an autograph book. And one of my favorite coolest parts of knowing Rod has been I went to go to Gettysburg 
I took his leadership experience trip with him. If you have not done that, I highly, highly recommend you sign up for this. But he's going to give one free trip away to join them at that experiential Gettysburg. April 7th of next year is the next trip. It's an awesome, it's leadership in the battlefield. Um, I know that some people here have been on that before. It, it, it's a full day. We jump in a coach and we drive up to Gettysburg and we go through the, the battlefield chronologically. What happened, the first stop is what happened the morning of day one of the battle. And we have, a, 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 <coughs> excuse me, we have a ranger talk about what happened there. And then we have a discussion about, okay, how does what happened this spot in 1863 relate to what's going on in your operation today. So real, real briefly, in that situation, that, that first morning, the Confederates were, were coming up over the ridge. The Union Army knew that they were somewhere in the area, but weren't sure where. The Confederates had no idea that the Union Army was there. And so the Union set out small branches, small units to find out where they were. One of them found the, the Confederate Army, and they set up a... A, a, a small defensive front that they knew that they were going to have to give up before the end of the day, but that it would buy the Union Army time to get into the position they ultimately needed to be in to win that battle. And sure enough, um, the, the Confederates found that small unit and eventually pushed them off. But the question becomes, if you're a business leader, when might be a time when you know that there is a threat or an opportunity about to come over the ridge and you know that you're just not ready, what can you do to set up that, that defensive pause mm -hmm. so that you can take full advantage of that? And we have really great conversation. And I always make sure to mix up the people because yeah. I believe in cross-pollinating ideas. And so you may have come up with your buddy and you know Doug might be there and Dave might be there and Kim might be there and they're, they're all friends and they're all hanging out, but I'm going to break them up so that they get to meet other people and they get to exchange ideas with one another. And it's a full day experience. You're on and off the bus, you're huddling up, you're walking. The, uh, the stories are amazing. Uh, the day that I got to go along, you had your professional expert and you had a guy in training that was almost ready to get yeah, certified. Yeah, yeah. And then you have all your knowledge. Yep. So it's, it's an awesome day. Would book two maybe be a leadership book based on Gettysburg or Antietam or anything like that? Is that cooking around your head? But you do so I've, much of that. I've already got book two like ready to spill out of me. And <laughs> I, I can't wait to be doing this with you next year to, to be celebrating that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. I so, so can you tease us a little bit? So can, can, can you give us a little nugget here? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I am very much into um, stories about um, redemption because I, I think that's what life is really about is it, it's, it's go out, learn, do, and, and improve, improve yourself, improve the situation, leave it better than you found it, whatever it is, leave it better than you found it. And my favorite movie of all time is Groundhog's Day. And I love it because first of all, it's got Bill Murray and who doesn't help me Bill out, Murray. Nick, come on, help me out here, please, please. And, <laughs> and so um, in that movie, you know, he's, he's a complete ass and he, um, and he doesn't care. He knows that he is, he's, you know, he calls himself the talent boom, 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 and he teaches. And then all of a sudden he finds he's stuck day in, day in. It's just like, and, and he does exactly what anyone else would do. You know, he, he tries changing up everything, you know, tries killing himself. Like I got to stop this somehow. And it finally dawns on him that it, why not try to make things better instead of thinking about me all the time, why not try to make things better? And that's what ultimately breaks it for him. And I love the, I, I love the story. You know, talking about values, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the value that he learned to appreciate and go after. And so I'm talking to my friend, Rob Orlando, actually. And we're sitting back and I was having a beer and he was having a truly because I think that's what Rob likes. The most. <laughs> and he's like, dude, that is such a great idea. And I'm like, <laughs> So, so I was thinking, why not have a book? You remember all the books and, and I'm going to have to watch copyright. So all, all my lawyer mm -hmm. friends, I'm going to need your help on this. <laughs> the, the, the book, everything I learned, or, or, everything I ever needed to know, I learned in kindergarten. This one's going to be everything I needed to learn. I, I learned by watching Bill Murray movies. 
So, hmm. you know, we're, we're going to go through all of the Bill Murray movies because Scrooge is very much the same way. Yes. But yes. going all the way back from Meatballs up to, um, you know, the, the, the stuff that he does now, um, there are lessons to be learned by the characters that he plays. And I think it would be so much fun to do something like that. So we're going to have another individual join us and i believe they are in house here tonight right is doug plank in house or is he uh online? doug would be online is doug, doug, doug hanging there? out with us yes let me see if doug look, doug if you're there you're on mute to jump on in and join the conversation here if you could doug. doug i don't know if doug made it tonight so who is doug and why was so, doug so important so doug plank is an amazing individual doug plank was number 46 on the chicago bears the bears um and uh, he is. Uh, he has this amazing story, and his story is is in the book. He was one of the. He's one of the contributors. Um, and uh, Doug was there when Buddy Ryan was creating the four six defense, and the four six defense was this defense that just stymied all uh, offenses. And you know the the Bears went on, and you know they had until the Ravens came, came in late on, they had the best defensive team ever, right. ever. Uh, and Doug was part of that. And they, and they called it the four, six defense. Cause as buddy was writing stuff up on, on the whiteboard, he looks over and, and there's Doug. who's just like this awesome maniac of a player out there playing linebacker. And he's like, we're going to call this the four, six defense. He's looking at, at his shirt. And, and, and so the four, six defense is named after the number that Doug wore. Doug is an awesome guy. I really wish that he was on tonight to, to say hi. Um, He's a passionate, passionate person, and um, and the contribution that he made to the book, it, you really need to read because he talks about how important it is to give your all and mm -hmm. and to lay it all out on the line. Um, he's he's a great guy. Well, again, he mentions Buddy Ryan. You've got Bill Walsh. Just in a little snippet, he's there. He's mentioning other greats. Yeah. Besides his own greatness as well. Yeah. By the way, how did you again find all these amazing people and get through? their agents, the, the the different hurdles, because you had a list at one time that you read to me and I went, okay, now we're going to get done. And it's done. Yeah. So how did you actually do this? Well, um, my wife, who is the most excellent person in the world, thank you, Kim, for putting up with me for all these years. Um, she calls me a serial connector. And I am, I love connecting people. If, if I know that, you know, someone needs a purple squirrel, I know that my friend Dave can find purple squirrels. Mm -hmm. And, and I get those two people together. Um, but it's, it's just knowing people, it's being authentic. Um, because again, my biggest fear was, you know, if I reach out to these people directly and they don't know me from Adam, I'm probably not gonna get anything from them. And so I just, I put my wish out there and I would meet people at networking events and I would tell them who I was and what I was doing. And that my, my big wish down the road was to write this book. And one of the things I needed to, have make that happen was these these people who had either played or coached or refereed or whatever <clears throat> in college and professional football and a great example is uh, you know I, I met this guy art uh, at, at a, a networking event and you know he's like it's a pretty cool guy what you know I want to meet up with him and he's like well let's have breakfast sometime I was like great he's like can you you know meet me at uh, Bob Evans at 6 a.m. I was like that's kind of early art <laughs> And, you don't start to 11 we all know yeah that. yeah I, I you know i'm I, i'm i'm not a morning person i'm i'm good late at night but i'm not a morning but anyway art was very kind to me and he said okay eight o'clock and i said thank you and uh we met and we had i i thoroughly enjoyed meeting i i mean an amazing guy and he's like i know somebody and i wouldn't mind introducing and so that's how i got one of the contributors jeff diamond and um, and it was just stuff like that, Rich. It was just, you know, being authentic, putting my wish out there, throwing the karma out to the world. And, you know, every once in a while, karma will give you a kiss. Well, we're going to have Art come on up right now. So we're going to cool. uh, have him come on up and take a seat here, Art, with your good. And we're going to come back to that conversation about the people he reached out to and uh, that process. We were talking before and uh, Art... Uh, we got talking about all the Minnesota connections and uh, I was in Minnesota for over 30 years doing sports radio. Uh, and it just so happens the name Jeff diamond popped out tonight. And I went, I know that name. So you actually literally made that connection for Rod. Why did, why did you want to do that? Why, what, what even made you think I should do this for the guy? 
Well, like Rod, I like making those connections. Um, he seemed to be a genuine person. Um, and Jeff is a friend, um, basically through our kids. My, my son was in love with his daughter, so we got to meet them. And I just thought it's really cool. This is an NFL executive. I mean, he was NFL executive yeah. of the year one year. Um, it's unfortunate that you're a Packers fan because, you know, <laughs> you know, count the championships. He, you know, <laughs> he, 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 was, he was a Vikings guy and then um, a Titans guy. Apparently, I, I met him before my son met his daughter because my son was friends with his son. And I get a call and whatever, whatever year the Ravens were playing the Titans in the playoff game, my, con my son calls me from school and said, would you be interested in going to the playoff game next week and having field passes before the game? I said, nah, <laughs> I want to do that. So we went to the game where we were in a tunnel watching the cheerleaders come out. We were on the field on the sideline. The game was just great, but it wasn't for about another probably four or five years before I met Jeff and everything. And I just thought, you know, Rod is looking for someone familiar with the NFL. Yeah. Jeff was executive of the year one year. He was president of the Titans. He was general manager of the Vikings. And I can give him an introduction. Why wouldn't I do that? So was that an easy uh, introduction when you got a hold of Jeff and say, hey, I've got this guy, you don't know him? Yeah. Was Jeff like, he's, I mean, he's, he's like a real person. You know, he's, he's a regular person. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not scary. You know, I sort of feel like, you know, you know, being up here, I sort of feel like, okay, I shook Mahatma Gandhi's hand one day and all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm on television because I shook Mahatma Gandhi's hand. You know, <laughs> not me that's famous, it's him. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's nice to rub shoulders. What would you say to Rod and have you read the book? Have I have read? not read the book. I have not been given a copy. Oh, well, shame. We need to change that. <laughs> but as I, excuse me, I have not bought a copy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that will happen. <laughs> that will happen tonight. Here we are right there. Uh, when, when it comes to his concept for the book, he shared that concept probably with you first. Yeah. So, you know, go reach out. What do you think of his concept? What do you think of the idea of how to connect sports leadership and the things that he wants to extract from that? I think it's a great idea. I think uh, one of the things about sports is if you're the leader, um, you're a very public leader. Mm -hmm. um, everything you do is subject to criticism by two, three, four hundred thousand, you know, six million people. Mm -hmm. um, chances are any decision you make is going to be parsed and reparsed and, and criticized. So, yeah, I mean, how you can lead in that environment is certainly challenging. What would you be your advice for Rod as his stars keep rising, as he keeps pushing out? What would you say to him to keep going forward? What would you say to help him keep on this path that he's on? Remember us little people. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. thank you very much okay. for stepping up here and sharing a little bit. Okay. Give him a round of applause, everybody. That wasn't too painful. That was fun. Great. Mark's a good guy. So, as again, as you hear some of these comments coming back to you, what's going through your mind right now? A, the baby is born, but now Total you're relief. really hearing from people talking about it, and you're going through this process. What are you feeling? I, I have been saying this for a while now. I feel I am the most blessed person on this earth. Um, I married up. Uh, I am so lucky to have my wife. Uh, I went two for two on the kids. We went two for two on the kids. Um, and I have, I, I've, I've got the ability to put out a book, but more importantly, I have friends that are willing to come out and help celebrate. And I love you all. I really do. Matt, Kevin, Rob, Dave, my God brother, Dave, John, a, a new friend who I'd like immediately connected with. I, I mean, everybody that's here thank you so much the pinzos who you know my lock knob i have to tell you what a lock, lock knob is i haven't ever told you what a lock knob is okay so so a question for you what do you call the person who you've known for the longest amount of time in your life well there, there is no term for that in english language there's not there is no term for that so there is now <laughs> there is now so um my friend kim shot pinzo I've known her since second grade. 
And we were up at uh, Alpine Lake, West Virginia, gorgeous place. Go, go visit sometime if you get a chance. Um, celebrating her birthday along with the 4th of July. And we we're, we're talking like, wow, we've known each other since second grade. And I was like, you're like my oldest friend. And she hit me because I am not your oldest friend. <laughs> I mean, no, I guess you're right. You're not. My I have friends who are older than you. And we agreed that even though we, we love each other, she's like a sister to me, we're not best friends. I was like, well, what is the term for us? We are the longest known friends. Lockknopf. So <laughs> whenever I do my goal, tra- you know, like whenever I'm training on goal setting, right? at the very beginning, I, ha- I have them write down, what, is, what, is the, what does this word mean? Does anybody know the definition of this word? No, no one's ever heard of the word Lockknopf. I'm like, we'll get back to this. And then we How do, do you spell it. L O K N O F, longest known friend, all sandwiched together. And you completely made that up. I made that up. Absolutely. I think Dave Pinzo may have helped um, her husband. <laughs> um, but so at the end of the goal training that I do, I was like, okay, then I flash the word Locknov up. I was like, and I explained, this is my goal. I've got X amount of you in the room right now, and I need you to go spread the word. I even have a Facebook page dedicated to the word Locknov. My goal is that's your next book. That's it right there. My, that, that, that's the book. My goal is that when I die, the word Lochnov will be in Webster's dictionary. So go spread wow. the word. There we go. Go spread the word. Hashtag Lochnov. Hashtag Lochnov. So in your author's notes, you talk about your background, the human resources you talked about here a little bit. You laid the book out. You said in the beginning of each chapter, you'll get the, the movie quote. Mm-hmm. Because you love the movies. And then you're going to get the helpful tips and topics. And at the end of each one, you'll add in the go to the replay booth. Yep. Tell us about the replay booth. So if you're a football fan, you know that um, with all the technology that's come along of late, that if there is a questionable call, they the refs will, you know, go check out the, the replay in the replay booth. And essentially, it's just my way of saying, it's a football motif way of saying, here's what the key points of the chapter are. Mm-hmm. So if you just want to cheat through the book, all you have to do is go to the end of the chapter and read those. And you also did some of in a chronology of your leadership. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the book itself is the chronology of leadership. Uh, you know, it, it runs in the fashion of you, you need to do D before you do O, before you do W, before you end. So it's the chronology of leadership is what this book is about. And I, it was just a happy circumstance that... There are 11 letters in downset lead, and how many players were there on a football team? 11. 11. Bingo. Amazing. So I knew that was a sign I needed to do it. Before we bring our next guest up, I do want to ask you, when you were going through the editing process, I, I, because you, you, you had anyone that gives their baby over, it's yeah. tough to say edit it and tell me what you think. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge for you to give that up and let them really speak into the editing process? Was there something you wrestled over and they really debated you on? I, I no. Um, I, I'm blessed to have a really, really good editor. His name's Lee Crumball. I was hoping that Lee would be able to make it tonight. But he had an emergency. If anybody needs an editor, Lee Crumball is your man. Um, he's from Chicago, uh, and so he and he journalism background, leadership background. Is he's an amazing, amazing guy. Uh, I love Lee, and um, I I willfully handed my book over because I know that. You know, you can write something and you can go over it and proof it yourself. You're going to miss it. I have to hand that off. And that's what he's really good at. And so I had no problem handing it over to Lake. So let's bring up, is Jay around? I saw Jay earlier. Is Jay still in the box with us? We're going to bring the mic alive again. Jay, are you still with us? If so, uh, pop up and say hi. I know people are coming and going. They're getting ready for game time. The Baltimore game is coming up tonight in Monday Night Football. So we have to make sure he can... Go watch it. But uh, are you with us tonight, Jay? I guess not. Okay. So what we're going to do at this point is um, we are going to bring up, uh, first of all, we're going to do live in the room. Anyone have any questions for Rod? Uh, stand up, ask them, and we'll recite it so the online group can hear that as well. But does anyone have a question from the peanut gallery tonight? No, oh, I see a hand. Go for it. John. Yeah. So the question from the floor is, when did you really close it? When was it really done and you weren't going to touch it again? Great question. About two weeks ago, 
Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I like, I'm done. I, you know, there's, but one person I, I really want to give a shout out. I, I had several proofreaders. Um, Joy Hayward was fantastic. Uh, Mike Sheila was fantastic. And Pat Maycomber, one of my all-time favorite people. Um, she's been a mentor of mine for many years. She did it more than the, the proofreading. She really challenged me on the layout of the book. And she said, you know, you've got to do this. And, and she was a little bit of an English teacher herself. Um, and I did those things. And when I was done and I threw it back at Lee one last time, Lee edited my book three times. And um, I'm like, that's it. I am D-U-N done. <laughs> and I, and, and again, I handed it over. And, uh, you know, the, the, we, the weird thing, I've learned an awful lot about writing a book. I had the, the artist was in Pakistan. My, uh, my designer, the person who put the book together was in Oregon. Um, I, I mean, it's been an international feat here just put this thing together. But then on you know, when, when my designer said, uh, the book, the, the proof is coming to you yeah. and go to Amazon because it's in your cart and you actually have to pull it out of your Amazon cart. And I did. And then I saw the little sign that says it's coming, you know, on Friday or whatever, or Thursday or Friday. Um, and, uh, and I was like, I, you know, I, I want to see it. And my wife, Kim called me up and she said, Hey, um, we're going to take Aaron out um, for dinner. Do you want to just meet us after work? And I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, but there's supposed to be something that I'm expecting. She goes, would it be a package from Amazon? And I was like, <laughs> yes. I was like, can you, I was like, can you please bring that? She goes, sure. And so it was really cool to be at dinner with my two girls and they handed the package over to me and I opened it up. And I mean, it was feeling like I'd never had. Do they have video of that? Did someone video tape that? Uh, Aaron is, yes, she's giving that. That's very up. cool. Got That's that. very yeah. cool. Um, we're going to jump to online. Anyone online got a question? Get unmute yourself and uh, go live and ask Rod a question here. Look at that. You impress them so much. They have nothing to That's say. Cool. Unbelievable. That's cool. Okay. One more call. I have a question. Got any, got any, uh, I, questions from I, the audience? I do have a question. Somebody? Oh, wait. Did, did we have somebody that wanted to? Okay. Yes. This is Gigi. And I'd like to hear from Ron what was the, Rod, what was the hardest part of getting it done? <laughs> Working part, with me. If, no. if he had to pick no, 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 one no, no. single part that he considers, because, you know, he's looking at leadership, you're dealing with challenges. And so what's, what was the most significant challenge looking back on the whole process now? You know this, Gigi. G, uh, Gigi's in, uh, in- I actually, uh, no, I want to hear you say it now. I, I actually it, don't. It, I mean- it was, it was finishing the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was because, again, I, seriously, I, I started writing this, you know, er, like relatively early in my career. You know, I, I was four, five, six years into my career. And I'm like, I can't believe these stupid- things that people are doing. And I'm like, I, I, I was saving them up. And then um, okay. literally through the decade, uh, decades, I was putting this together. And I, I mean, I was so close to the finish line, right? So close to the finish line. And they're like, just finish the book, Rodney. And, 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 and they challenged me. Thankfully, they challenged me. And, um, and I, I want to give a shout out again, um, Gigi, Becca, Dan, Skinny Rod, um, between the four of them and my accountability partner, Rob, um, they were the ones that helped me push it across the line. Okay. Great, question. Great question. Thanks for that. Yeah. That. So we're going to go to prizes and we're going to go, uh, is there a magic hat someplace? There's a magic hat. Uh, we, my, do, we, we do have a magic hat. My, my daughter loves bucket hats. So um, one of her bucket hats. I will hold that so there is no cheating here. Okay. No looking. This will be the third place prize. You have an ebook copy of Downset Lead coming your way Thanks to Kevin Sissick. Kevin, my awesome brothers. There we go. Uh, make sure you take. Uh, make sure you know who's getting we what. Got there. We got it. Okay. Second. Uh, second one will be a autographed copy of Downset Lead. Matt Bourne. Woo. Great. What a great last name. <laughs> it's cousin Matt, and, and cousin Matt deserves a lot. So here's a grand prize: you get yourself a copy of the book, autograph, and you get that Gettysburg Experience, April seventh. Which, which I'm telling you, you do not want to miss out on this. 
And that would be Michelle Burke. Michelle, yeah. Awesome. So we're coming on the end, and we do want to uh, re re respect uh, the Tap House. And, uh, of course, the game's going to be coming on, and Rod's going to jump off his chair. We don't yeah. need to jump on top. Um, coming down to the end, just what is what is your hope for this book? Who is this really targeted for, and what's the hope as you put this out there greater and greater? I, I think that the audience that will get the most out of the book will be young professionals, people between the age of 23 and uh, 35, 37. Um, but I think that older folks will also get a lot out of it. Um, Nick, thank you for, for thinking it was entertaining. I think it's entertaining. I think it'll bring a smile to your face. I think even if you are uh, a, a more seasoned veteran um, manager, leader, you'll it, it will make you do some thinking and reassess how you're doing things. Um, so I and, and my hope is that people will get something out of it and that um, it will make a difference and it'll help them get traction. Going back to one of the other questions about what was it that you knew you had it done no more. Looking back on the process, the two plus years, mm -hmm. did it really need to take this long or could it maybe have been buttoned up earlier? It definitely could have been buttoned up earlier. And, and <laughs> that's on me. And but you know, I, I like to make the public wait. Hopefully they think it's worth it. <laughs> Where can they find the book? How can they get a hold of it? Uh, and again, what's the best way to get yep. it from on Amazon? Um, both the ebook and the paperback are available. Uh, just go ahead and get on there, type down set lead, maybe add my name to it. That's born as in Jason's younger brother without the E, um, <laughs> and, uh, and it should come right up. And give a review, give a comment, Please. give them some stars. But if you have a written comment, it really helps the algorithms. It really helps things grow. So we want him to get it further and further. Will, that. Thank you. Will it also end up being on your website? Or oh, yeah, like absolutely. That? It can go to Downset Lead. Uh, Nick got that set up for us uh, where they can just hit that button and, uh, and the book will come up also. What wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, again, I know there were people you wish could be here tonight. A great evening for you. It has been. I, I really, really, really want to thank everyone. I mean, especially the folks that came out on a Monday night. Um, but great place, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Great place. I, I thank all the people online who showed up. Um, I, I am blessed to have you as friends. And um, I sincerely appreciate you. Thank you very much. The book is called Down, Set, Lead, the ultimate playbook for building your leadership confidence. Let's, I'm going to see if it's going to work for me. Oh, come on. Let's see. We're going to try that. The ultimate playbook. We're going to have to sing. No, no. We were going to hopefully the crowd <laughs> here at their end. But my name is Rich Bontrager, The Trigger. Uh, this has been a production of Rock the Stage Media, one of our book launch parties. And again, Rod, I want to officially say congratulations. Thanks, partner. All Thanks the you. teasing, all the rubbing set aside. It's been good. The book is done. It's out, everybody. Give them a big round of applause for Rod and PSL. And for everyone joining us online tonight, thanks for taking the time and being with us. We made it before kickoff, so go get your popcorn, go get your goodie. And go Ravens. I was just want to make sure we had that for the record tonight. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.